Thank you, um, Joe, for inviting me to come here today. Um, I've added the word new because that is important to me because I'm a new user of the resource. So um, I'm currently working elsewhere, but I've been uh, for the past two years working at Imperial College um, building that micro simulation. My background is on motor racing. I spent most of my past two decades racing cars around the world. Um, and so I have a like different mindset when it comes from academia because the, I need to think about global optimization, results. Optimizing local things is not always feasible for us because we need to race. There's always the next race and the times are very short between each race and we never race the same car. So for me, it's more important development speed. And when you try to develop at speed, you don't have time to do a lot of optimization and concentrate on, on local problems and to make sure that your CPU is running red. So I'm going to go through uh, uh, my experience here um, how I got on by using Easy Build for the first time to get something actually uh, um, deployed to a HPC here at Imperial. So the outline of my talk is that I'm going to give you an introduction to our health GPS here, and then I will give you the two uh, parallel one doing the process by hand, which is usually where, how you start, and then my transition to easy build and how that actually, uh, how, how that gone. And the final part is, uh, have we actually accomplished that? Are we done with that uh, transition? So first, health GPS, so it's Global Health Policy Simulation it is a micro simulation tool being developed by uh, the Center of Health Economics here in Imperial College and the Irony in France as part of the STOP project is a European wide project um, to tackle childhood obesity. So the simulation simulates countrywide population, so a fraction of the country's population. And we are interested on, on lifestyle, behavior change, and metabolic risk factors that how that one leads to chronic disease in later life. Um, so we simulate several scenarios and test the effectiveness of policies, high level policies for government. And that includes something like um, uh, nutrition label, the one that you go to supermarket and you see the red, uh, how much sugar, how much fat is on, on the product. So that is one of the, the um, policies that uh, you need to evaluate and see how that will affect your population. Um, others which will affect you when you go to the shop is sugar tax. Uh, anything that has sugar, you have, you pay more for that or less. So this simulation is, 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 a, is done for high level policy making. And so in terms of computation, the biggest limitation here is how many people can you simulate. So it's an um, individual kind of actor based simulation. So we need to simulate very large populations and they interact over time um, by time with Talk about 30 years or even more 50 years because you want to see people go to school, get old and see what's happened when they get old and uh, uh, what the outcome of the health is going to be. And that is what you try to balance if it's worth doing this intervention at this stage. So I'm going to now move to the software which is open source, it's a cross-platform 
uh, piece of software is written in C++. And there are other more limiting um, points is that we are not focusing specifically on high performance computing. Our software needs to run on a desktop, cloud, and high performance computing is a specific use case that we need to be able to do so that we can run larger populations and scale our, our software. The development chain is CMake. Some of you <laughs> said that you had a lot of problems. I don't have problems with CMake. I've been using CMake for many years. Um, and one of the pain points for every software developing C++ world is dependence, resolution, compatibility, and be able to actually assemble all your dependencies, build everything. And so we've been using package managers to do that in recent years. And there are a number of them. I chose VC Package, a developed by Microsoft, but there is an also Ninja, no, sorry, another more uh, Python based as well. And the project is hosts on GitHub and we use GitHub for pretty much every integration test and so on. Um, here's the link if you want more information about and about picking the source code, whatever you want to do. It's all available there, it's well documented. And um, get involved if you think it's something that you like to do. Um, so I will start how I started working in the Imperial HPC. That was before Easy Build being introduced and was introduced quite later uh, for me. So the first thing you have to do is you go to the HPC, try to see what was available there. And to my surprise, the compilers were very old. So I had to start by requesting an update ticket and that ticket took quite a considerable amount of time to come back. While that was happening, then you go DIY and you build your own local uh, environment on your uh, uh, login nodes, which is complete against all the guidelines. And the important bit is that when we eventually are able to build that software, we tend to store somewhere in the file system and then let people know where it is and start running from there. And incredibly, this tends to be most the way that people actually work because install the software, you need to go through the chain of tickets. I got a new version, you need to install it. And so as a research group, we tend to actually uh, uh, share the, the binaries and the data complete independent of the, the HPC deployment system. And then run the experiments, um, analyze results and so on. You know well these, the, the, uh, the, um, the steps here. And hopefully it's accepted for uh, publication or not. So trying to reproduce that environment is almost impossible because uh, I've done myself. Um, and even I probably don't know how to do it again because I did over time and I start doing one step or another step and another step. And this is what Easy Build supposedly is here to do, is to actually solve that problem so that we can actually be reproducible. And that's a major, major addition and a solution for academia, especially, but not only for academia, we also need the producibility um, at the industry. Industry today is, is very keen to, to be able to repeat, to reproduce your results. Uh, it's not unique for academia. This is, is a global uh, um, requirement that we be reproducible, that we can repeat ourselves and other people can check your results. 
So they move to easy build. Thanks for the for George. We yeah, introduced to easy build and was looking for volunteers to uh, um, provide a project. And I volunteered myself, and that is the story began. So I started by setting up easy build on my machine as a developer and uh, the first stumble was the integration with github there's a long list of uh, steps and you better make sure that you don't miss them but be patient you get there easy config was another journey um, the first encounter is it looks similar to what you'd say a ci script for github but what actually makes difficult for me was the dependencies and having to find all the the um, easy config for everything that i was using and if you don't find those then you need to get your hands dirty and do yourself and make sure that you get everything in place all the easy config that you need in place before you can actually have your own easy config uh, accepted and, and actually um, published. The good news there is after lots of trial, I must say I wouldn't have done by myself, it wasn't for the support that I received from, from Joe and his team. Um, they started by creating this script, which was the first thing that caught my attention. That all right, let's remove the package manager and you see make few changes. Wow that's now is going to be interesting and then we start the journey of building up all these uh, uh, dependencies and i personally found that quite intimidating because most of the dependencies that i was using wasn't there uh, so we had to actually do quite a lot ourselves the good news is after all that work is done then now we have um, we can install the, the application on my local uh, space and there are three dev uh, stacks in, uh, here at Imperial there is the development and then production so while you you software you, you use configs on PR you're not allowed to go to production so there is a link between you software being accepted you complete and then you'll be allowed to go to production until then either is local or is a development um, stacks and now i don't need to keep sending mails to users they all can go to the command line and check what's the latest version that i have there and all that is this uh, layer that has been removed the same process will continue to, to happen with running experiments and trying um, results and so on. But this time, there is a big difference. You can reproduce that result, the installers and so on. So that's for me is the biggest contribution for from EasyBuild. And I thank you all for that. And, uh, I know it, uh, open source is, is, is a hard work uh, it's been there for, for quite some years, um, but in the end, that is what actually makes the difference. Um, I wouldn't today if I need to do another kind of similar work, I would start with this build as my starting point because it removes. It's not perfect, but is much much better than the previous option we had so now I'm going to go to the question if we are there already or not and unfortunately we're not there and presumably you know we're not there because there are things that can be improved there's always things that can be improved including our own lives so my first problem I had with easy build is that it doesn't integrate into the development chain. The is config is somewhere, my code is somewhere. Uh, two different 
close control. And is not part of my uh, continuous integration. Yeah, I don't test these configs as, as, I, as I go developing my tool. So at some point, when I actually say, well, here's a release of my tool, then I go jump over and uh, now I need to create a is config and then get things approved and all the work goes. So that is something that um, I don't know how easy it is to do it, but if we could integrate easy build into CI build and so that it can be tested as part of the development cycle, not separate from the development cycle. Um, other issue I, I found this might be unique for, for Imperial is that uh, easy build optimized for, for the HPC hardware, but the question is which hardware? Um, because I noticed those flags being added uh, to my GCC. And then the next thing you know is, is that Imperial doesn't have a single piece of hardware. There are several kinds of hardware. And if I optimize too much for a specific architecture, and try to run on the next one, on the different one, then I might be up for a surprise. And that there is a, walk, a way I can specify that I can say, well, I only want to use this um, hardware, type of hardware on my, on my experiment. But that might lead to a very inefficient uh, environment because I'm now if everyone starts start to choose the same CPUs because of the latest one, then you might end up with longer wait times for your jobs to, to complete. Um, and you're going to have a lot of idle nodes, which no one is trying to use. And it's not an easy so solution. If you look at Imperial, um, these are the queues, and then you have the CPU times on each one of them. Now, just choosing the queue is a, there's another big grid which you need to navigate, which size of memory, uh, number of nodes, and um, duration of your, your jobs. But as soon as you hit that queue, now you have several types of hardware available. And if I optimize to one, then I might hit the other nodes as part of that. So, in the case of um, health GPS, we are not trying to be too optimized to the level of the hardware because we are, must be able to run on a desktop, on a cloud computer, and when you go to the cloud, you have no idea which hardware you're going to run there. You just have a, 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 a account and you say, I want to run this, and it goes to some data center that will uh, choose which VM you want to actually run, unless you pay for the specific VM I want to run on this one. So I'm more interested in generality, have a piece of code that can run everywhere um, without getting too close to the hardware because that gives me a lot more flexibility than being completely attached to a specific machine and as you know, HPC is get upgraded. And you might spend a lot of time tuning, tuning, and tuning for a specific architecture. And next year, they uh, come along and say, right, we're upgrading the HPC, and now all these new CPUs come along. And now your code is no longer good for the next generation of uh, CPU. So I might be going against the wave here, but from my point of view, um, I prefer that the software be general, generic that can actually scale across different environments than actually be too focused on a specific uh, uh, architecture and, and CPU. The next thing that we love to do in open source that we like to try different <coughs> compilers. 
and uh, compiler version. My code should compile with GCC as old as I can go, but I also should do the next one, the new version. And so it's quite a common practice for us to create this pipeline to try to compile your code with a new CPU, or, sorry, a new compiler. As soon as a new version of GCC comes along, then we say, sort of, let's try to see if my code is still compiled with that one. And sometimes the compilers are improving to such a level that just moving the same piece of code from one compiler version to the next one, you're already getting performance on that. An easy build is not, doesn't help me a lot on this transition to try out a new compiler. I need to go back and redo all my uh, dependencies now with the new compiler. So the initial cycle that I just gone through my initial development, I need to repeat that one again for the new compiler or, or, or a different compiler. So the bottom line message that I have uh, for, for, for the easy build uh, developers is that we still have a very steep learning curve to start with easy build. And my suggestion as a new user is that we should try to lower that entry point because that is very important for any software to live for a long time. And I do hope from that easy build we will stay around for a very long time because it solves a very important problem. And that's probably the biggest message I would like you to take away is for easy build to be here in 20 or 10 years, 20 years time, you need new users. Without new users, we can't go forward. No open source project will survive if there is no new users. That's all for me. Okay. Any questions for Israel? But my can point you, is that I don't. You, can you repeat the comment first? Because that, yeah. um, so the, the question is <laughs> why um, I need to, I'm not able to do the, the cross compilation, cross compiler with the build that, that is possible to do. My point is that I don't want to do that. I want to, because if I want to run my software without worrying which node I end up. I shouldn't yeah, go that far. That's exactly when you have to cross compile. Yeah, you, you are on one node type that you want to compile for the minimal node type that you want to support if you have a bridge on the imperial college issue. So you want to avoid minus m part maybe and have minus m part, which is what is it for uh, the some of the 
generic or yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I want it need to be generic. To generic to There's Yeah, there is support for this, and it's in the documentation as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ezebel has a way to build generic binaries that work anywhere. So yeah. there is a caveat there, and I think it's an important one. So today, that's feasible because you have mostly Intel CPUs and some AMD <laughs> CPUs. AMD. Yeah, but but ARM is coming, and ARM is going to be very hard to ignore and say two years from now with the Nvidia Grace CPUs coming. People will not be able to ignore ARM and say, oh, we won't use it because it's not like 66, it's going to cause trouble. You, it, it's a similar story to the GPUs. People, mm -hmm. have, at least we did, we actively said, we'll wait on the GPUs, right? Because it's going, to, it's going to create more demand for software, it's going to create more support requests. We didn't have the time for it, so we actively waited. But at some point, we couldn't ignore, I mean, we, we were not going to be relevant and people were going to run away if they didn't have GPUs. Yeah. So, so at some point, this will be true for ARM as well. And then it's a very different story because you cannot take one binary and run it everywhere anymore. You need at least two, right? ARM one and an x 6 one. Yeah, we, and that make it get worse. I think that that is, that is true. Um, and I, GPUs have that problem from the beginning, mm -hmm. right? Moving your piece of code from one GPU to another GPU is, is usually require quite major rewriting. Are yeah, but that's easy to create multi architecture binary. Yeah, but and 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 you're the anti example, right? On Lumi, your the software that works on NVIDIA GPUs is yeah. no, I mean, but that's between GPUs that's the same as ARM and x It is, but within a single GPU family, within the NVIDIA you can do family, fat binary, or within yeah. the AMD family, it's actually easy to make a single binary. Make sure that you're near optimal for all different GPUs that you may encounter in your platform. Yeah, but yeah, well, this uh, related remark is that actually we did not feel like we were very specific and standard is going on. But this is the GPU to explore and the yeah. GPU to support it. So it would be easier, like, to use the mm -hmm. Yeah, AVX2 essentially. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's the that's version two. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So the Bart is saying there is some kind of standardization in x86 where they define different levels: v1, v2, v3, v4. Where v4 is, I think, AVX512. Three is AVX2, so if EasyBuild will be aware of those, it could be a lot easier to, to build generic binaries that work, let's say, on yeah. recent and not hardware. Yeah. yeah. Um, comment on that. What we are doing at Imperial is we said, okay, Sandy Bridge, Arbor Bridge is basically the same instruction set. Um, Haswell Broadwell is basically the same instruction set, so basically we are only building Haswell Broadwell, Sandy Bridge, Arbor Bridge. Works like a charm until you find a piece of software who is using on, on the Haswell Broadwell line something one of them is supporting, the other one is not. And of course, if you are building it on the one where it is supported and try to run it on the other one, you get a sec fault. Mm -hmm. So yes, we were thinking along these lines, basically what, what Bart was saying with a V1, V2 and whatever. Um, we were thinking along these lines with the hardware. Unfortunately, at one point, it didn't work. Yeah. And yeah, I, I, I think most, most, let's say, support teams or sysadmins are doing this because they know how important it is for performance as well. But from a user perspective, it's very different. So I'm, we, we see this in our, our, our user our users as well and the tickets that we're getting, people don't actually know why it matters or why. I mean, we have an issue where our login nodes are now AMD Rome, so it doesn't support AVX512. And people run into illegal instruction errors because they're running software that was built for our Skylake node. And it's very easy to accidentally run into that. And all you get is like illegal instruction, right? So they said, I did something illegal and, <laughs> and they open a ticket. 
So they don't, they don't really understand, first of all, what's going on and, and why it happens, why it's important, why it is like this. It's not we really trying to be annoying, it's trying to help them, right, and make, give them faster software. But, It, it's it's not older. AMD Rome is newer than Skylake. Yeah. <laughs> but the architect, it's just incompatible architectures. And if you go into ARM, it's it's even worse right? because nothing will work. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing with ARM is that you have the latest instruction set, and there's very the extensions that CPUs can choose independently from. Yeah, yeah. That so that mess is way bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nothing, there's nothing worse than the instruction without having binary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if nothing works, in some cases, in some cases, better. Yeah. There's a, a question or comment in the back as well. Yeah. Okay. As for the trying new compiler versions, there is a tried two chain version of the GPU. Yeah. You just take the old system config and you try two chain version with one compiler. Yeah. Yeah, so EasyBuild does have some some support for trying different toolchain versions quite easily with the try toolchain version option, which sometimes work, not always, but it, it does give you a push in the right direction. And save but you would need work. to have all your dependencies already also built for the other one. Yeah, yeah. If, if you do, ro if you enable robot, EasyBuild will do it recursively. Okay. Yeah. So I, I haven't used that, that feature. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mostly works not always, and it's it's maybe not very well documented. So that that could be a reason why you're not aware of it. Okay. Anything online, Simon? Before we wrap it up, <laughs> you've lost power. Uh, I can take a quick check. Yeah, it looks like it's mostly <laughs> comments, not really questions. Like yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I was just going to give you a, one example of GPUs that um, um, I had on one of my previous work is that we had any video GPUs and we developed quite a lot of software for uh, any video. But then AMD came as a sponsor. So first thing you do, get rid of all the NVIDIA because now you have to use AMD GPUs. And that was a very heavy rewrite to do. <laughs> yeah, that, it, I think that's a bit the, the, let's say the damage that will be done. We're coming from 10 years of only Intel and that's changing very rapidly and GPUs are only going to make that worse. So. Yeah. yeah, I, I want to say there's an easy answer there. I don't think that is. Okay. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs>